Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk a little bit about scripting, specifically scripting in the context of the basis engine and means and why we need it. But before we do that though, let's have a quick look at our our beloved crane. We've worked so long on this particular gameplay feature. It feels really good to, to finally get to do something else, to be honest. But I think we got a pretty nice crane going here. So, as you can see, I put in the uh, block out 3D meshes for the crane arm. Finally, uh, these are essentially the meshes that we blocked out in the previous uh, video. Was it maybe two videos ago or something like this? Um, I'm sure we'll we'll do improvements and tweaks to this thing later on, but uh, I think it works well enough now that that we can we can definitely prove the fun with this uh, this block out crane that we have here. So I think this turned out really nicely. Anyway, I'm at a point now where I essentially want to start turning this thing into a game, to a proper game. So what we have here currently is not really something that I would consider a full game. I consider this mostly a, uh, a tech demo or something like this. And while playing around with these gameplay features that we've already implemented, it's, it's, it's quite fun. And uh, indeed the game will feature a sandbox mode so that you can just mess around with things if you want to. I want the sort of meat of the game to be the single player campaign. Like currently there's there's no not really any um, any reason for the player to keep playing other than just like I said messing around with physics. Um, and I want there to be some actual objective in the game, something to to uh, keep the player coming back to keep them. Uh, experiencing the the, uh, the failures and the successes. And um, a core part on the technical level of creating that is scripting. So um, what is a script, specifically what is a script in terms of means and basis? Well, up here in this top bar we have a menu called run script and these are scripts that we've had actually for a, a quite a long time i haven't really spoken about them that much because they haven't been super relevant to what we've been discussing but i have created a few scripts and these these are scripts that are part of the level they're not really coded into the game to the executable or any dll or anything like that they're part of the actual data so the level and that is the main point behind scripts in basis is the fact that you can add logic and behavior to things in your levels without having to actually modify the code of the game. Uh, and so, for example, we can spawn cargo. And uh, the cargo is spawned where the uh, where the mother vehicle initially stands. And now we drove it away, so, so it's spawned in <laughs> right in the air. But anyway, uh, that, that's an example of a of a script. Here's another one. Spawned tilted mother. So it spawns uh, a mod another mother vehicle at a at, at an angle. Uh, this was something that I used to to uh, to test something earlier. And these are obviously these are like development scripts. Uh, you're not really supposed to run scripts like this as the end user, the the player of the game, but you can if you want to. Let's have a look at something that the player might encounter in a game. So here we are in the level editor for basis. We have this script editor field uh, here in the bottom right corner. And so this is where you will be editing your scripts. You can't, you can't input anything right here. I don't know if you can hear, hear me typing on the keyboard, but nothing happens. Uh, there's no, no text or code appearing. Let's open up a level. In fact, let's open up our trusty proto test level and see what's what. So here on the base layer, we have something called script one. And when we select it, you can see that, oh, now we can suddenly, now we can suddenly see all kinds of things. And in fact, two of the three 
development scripts that we saw earlier can be found here in this uh, in this script file. You see spawn cargo and you see spawn lots of cargo. Uh, so first of all, this language that you're seeing, this is Angel script. It's a third-party scripting language that I'm using for basis. Uh, here is the homepage if you want to see or if you want to have a, a, a closer look. This scripting language is specifically designed to be easily bindable to C++ and C. Uh, which is something that we'll get back to a, a little later in this video. Anyway, the language itself should be somewhat familiar to people who have been coding with uh, C style languages. So anyway, we have these methods here. Uh, spawn cargo, spawn lots of cargo, they are annotated with this dev um, annotation here. And uh, the dev annotation simply means that they are then, you can you can find them up here in the in the upper menu in the game. And you can even give it a name like this, like hello, and now you can actually see the that string instead of the name of the, of the script method. And uh, we can see that uh, that all right. We can we can do all kinds of things here. We we load a layer, for example. That's how we bring new things into the game. You can also just create game objects like this. Timers. You can destroy things. Uh, um, you can get you know random random floats. Print debug info. Send messages. We can do all kinds of things like this. And uh, in the final game, you. Um, you don't you don't run scripts explicitly like this, but instead you might use something called a trigger, for example. Let's put a trigger somewhere here. Let's put it right in between these objects to make it sort of obvious that it's there. Uh, and we can go here to the game object inspector. These are called uh, exposed properties in the terminology of basis. So these are things that are exposed to the tools. In this case, the level editor. And here we have uh, the trigger shape. We can make this like a sphere, for example, and we can make the radius larger so that it, it sort of occupies this, this area in here between these guys, right? And uh, this trigger also has a script. You can see it comes with a, with a script template, so a function that is executed when the object is created and a function that's executed when another object enters this volume and when it exits it. Well, um, we can just create something really simple here. Let's create a new layer first of all. Let's call this. Uh, what, what do we? What do we want to call this? What do we actually want to spawn? Let's spawn another vehicle, and um, let's spawn the vehicle. So let's call this spawned vehicle. Um, and into the spawned vehicle layer, we create a uh, another. Another vehicle. Let's spawn like a truck, for example, and spawn the truck right here, like this. So this truck is now part of the level. It's not spawned uh, directly into the level because you can see that this layer that it sits on doesn't have a a lightning bolt. The lightning bolt means that this is auto loaded. If I enable auto load, you can now see that there's a lightning bolt there. We can remove it. Now it's not there. So now if we, if we actually run this level, yeah, we can save, sure. Uh, you can see that there's no there's no vehicle here because that layer hasn't been loaded. Um, however, this trigger, which sits on the base layer, which is loaded by default, we can script this guy to actually load that layer. So let's do self load layer. Uh, layer name and blocking, so it wants a string and it wants a uh, a boolean. We can block. Yeah, it's just one object that it, it needs to load, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, the the name of the layer is spawned vehicle, like this, right? And we can even click this button, and you can see script built successfully. I think I can actually even make this larger for you. It's one of these places in the UI that's actually scalable. So script build successfully. If I have some, some, some bogus here, like larger, for example, I try to build this, 
you get information here that ah this is not this is not the thing you need to fix this before you can actually play the game so now if we um, if we play this we try this out in the game uh, let's make that the avatar for example and we can we can even uh, position the camera somewhere like this and then we can drive in there now that we drive in between those objects you can see hey boom a new vehicle appeared and I'm sure you can imagine all kinds of gameplay implications that this might have. Um, you, you might spawn new enemies when the player enters a certain area or something. Something to that extent. Alright, so. What is... What is the big deal? Why am I, why am I even talking about this? Well, the, the, the thing is that... We are writing means in Zig. And AngelScript is really designed to be used with C++, shall we say. It can work with C, it can even work with Zig, as you'll, as you'll hopefully see when we are done with this. But um, so far I haven't really done anything with, uh, with Zig and AngelScript. Let's go have a quick look at at a scripted object. So we have this scripted scripted component is a class. All right? This is a C++ class. Um, so you script components and you 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 can expose methods of a class in C++. For example, if we go back to our script here we can see that there is load layer here that you can call on the on the self object self refers to the actual component okay we can actually see that that we are registering an object method here on the script engine so this is angel script code and what it actually does is it it, it runs this this load layer method of the scripted object and this is all well and good, uh, however, we can't really do this with Zig components. So if we want to expose Zig code to the game, we can't really do that currently. Uh, and in, in fact, we can't, we can't even have any script associated with a, with a Zig object currently. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try something new. Because I'm, I'm going to try to make that happen for script. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to make Zig scripted object components happen. And uh, in order to make it slightly less uh, rambly, uh, I'm going to actually pause the video and uh, I'm going to go get back to to you when I have have something working, so we can we can see what's going on. So, I'm going to start, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I think we are ready for the first status update on what's going on. So, um, I've implemented this script code struct in Zig. And uh, script code is really just a container for, well, for script code, really. Uh, you can have source code, which is a string list, so a uh, standard array list of strings, essentially lines. And uh, you can have bytecode, because the angel script code is compiled into bytecode, which is then actually executed by the game. And so the idea of this script code struct here is that it matches the script code class on the C++ side. So uh, you can you can deserialize, for example, one of these guys using this one, uh, and and it is binary compatible with the C++ version of this class. Uh, and yeah, I have some templates here set up. For example, um, if you Remember from before when we created the, the trigger, we, we had something that looked a little bit like this. So you have on create, on object entered, on object exited. The idea is that if you create a trigger with a component that is created in Zig, we can we can immediately 
pre-populate the, the, the script code with this because people will most likely want to add something to on object entered, for example. All right, so what do we do with this now then? Well, um, if you remember previously, I told you that when we when we actually click an object in here in the game object inspector, you can you can see a bunch of things. For example, here we can see the position. Uh, these are called exposed properties in the code. They are essentially class or struct members fields in SIG terms that are exposed to the level editor and uh, with the um, with the C++ scriptable objects such as this script object here we actually have a script code here so this is this is really just a script code member that is exposed to to the uh, to the editor and it even has a button here open in editor if you happen to have more than one script code which is theoretically possible um, for for a for a component so yes this is how it is brought into the editor in the c++ side and i figured um, even though it's it might seem like a little convoluted like why why would you have to even care about where the script code goes most game engines just store it somewhere well, in this case, this is how it works in C++, so I, th I think I'm just going to go with the same thing for the SIG side, because that would mean that actually I can get things into the editor already, without having to really touch the editor at all. And so what I've done is, uh, besides actually creating the script code struct here, I've, I've added one to my exposed property test component. Here you can see we have a script code. I haven't really spoken about the exposed properties that much or at all so far. But as you can see, this is a normal component. We have the registration name, every, everything in the same way that we, that we typically do. And then we have some normal fields here that are, these are really just your, your average, your standard data types. And um, this is how it works if you want to actually make these into exposed properties. You create something called an exposed property map. And so, for example, we have some int. Oh, these are in a different order, actually. Yeah, maybe this should be maybe this should be first. But it doesn't really matter. You have you have an you have a member here, and then you register that member by uh, telling the 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 type of it, the the field name of it the default value, uh, the version it was added, this is currently always one. And then you can have some options, like you can you can have a display name, what it will look like in the editor. You can set it to have a parent. So for example, we have this. Uh, oh, I don't actually have an object of that type created currently. Let's, let's create one. Exposed property. Uh, yeah, you have these things parented under under another exposed property, things like this. And here we have some integer showing up in the editor with the default value of one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, uh, and uh, that corresponds to to that. Oh, one, two, three, four, six, five, six. Yeah, the, the, this is just testing code, really. Anyway, uh, I'm sure you've already seen that we now have a script code here. And uh, we have a script code property here in our exposed property map. So with this, we can actually now write things in here. Blah, 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 blah. You can write anything. Uh, it doesn't doesn't quite do anything yet. Uh, and if, if we select something else, and then we go back to this, it it, it is there. It gets serialized and everything. It doesn't have to do anything for that. Uh, now if we try to build this, um, it 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 won't work. It will tell me that. The component is not scripted, and that's because, well, the engine looks at the Zig component and goes, "This guy is not scripted." Like even even if it has a script code, it's not magically scriptable in that sense. But I already have scripts uh, sort of being stored in the level data, and uh, so that's a pretty good first step. All right, I'm gonna start working on the actual scriptability next and uh, 
I'll get back to you in a bit. All right, and we are back. So, uh, I need to give you, I think, a little bit of background about how these object types are registered on the angel script um, in the angel script library so if we go here to scripted component again we looked at this earlier uh, you might have uh, you might remember seeing seeing this this whole big list of methods that are um, essentially registered for this class but before we can register any method for for something we need to actually register the uh, the type itself you can see here that we are actually we're taking a const char type name um, which is then used to actually register these method these methods uh, with with the actual type so for example this scripted component is a base class for scriptable components written in C++. So for example, the, the, the trigger, we can have a look at the trigger component quickly. You can see here that the trigger component derives from scripted component. And uh, this guy has uh, a register type function here. Here we go. So here we register the object type with this name, trigger component. And then we can go to call uh, the call scripted component register built-in methods and we, we we go back here and we register all of these things like a, a a trigger can for example send messages and it can get its own name and it can load layers and, and destroy itself and blah 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 so get everything all the sort of standard methods if you will everything that all the scripted objects and components can do they get from scripted component but we still need to register the actual component in this case, trigger component. And so this is the uh, sort of missing piece that we, we didn't have previously to make something scriptable. And well, I've, I've gone ahead and added the same kind of same kind of system to SIG now. So now a component type can have a register angel script method. This is not an uh, like a method, really. This is more like a function. It doesn't take a, a self pointer, as you can see here. It just takes a registration, which is a, a new type that I've introduced. Looks a little something like this. You can register the component type, and you can even register methods. This doesn't really work yet, but I'm I'm assuming I'm going to need something like this. So I put it in put it in uh, already. And here we can see that we can we can then register a component type and we can give give the name of the actual component. What I initially tried was uh, using this registration name. It would it would um, essentially register it with this with this name. But unfortunately, we can't really do this because this this actually means something in in, in Angel Script. Uh, no pun intended with the word means here. Uh, but this would actually mean um, something like a namespace or, or, or regardless, this is not really a, a valid type name in AngelScript. So we need to actually give it a, a type here like this. This type is not typically really used in the script. It's just implicitly it needs to be there so that we, we can actually we can refer to types with some name on the tech side. Typically, you just call self dot something in the script, and 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 in that case, the self pointer would be of this type, exposed property test component. Regardless, this actually registers this this zig exposed property test component with the name exposed property test component. So a scriptable type in in uh, in angel script now. That's that's kind of interesting. And like I said, this is not a, uh, a method rather than a function. So this is just called whenever the uh, script engine is is set up. This is not something that we need to do for every every instance, rather every type that we want to script. So let's go back to the editor. And uh, let's see, did we have actually 
No, we don't we don't have one of those guys. I, I didn't save it from last time. So let's add add one of those back in. So exposed property test number one. Uh, now if we run run this script, we can see the script built successfully. Yay! And if we actually uh, like put in something here that isn't valid angel script, we can we can get proper errors. So now we're actually we're properly building this script now. And we're building it using the exact same code path as the actual C++ scripts. And this is why it was, was I would say, was such a good idea to use this, this script, have this script code which is binary compatible with the C++ version. Because we can simply have this as an exposed property and uh, the part in C++ which actually builds this, this thing just looks at the... Uh, essentially deserializes its version of a script code and then builds it and everything works so that's pretty cool all right so the the, the obvious problem here now is that we can't really do anything uh, <laughs> I added as a uh, as just a a, uh, a reminder to myself here uh, typically you have some sort of small auto completion going on uh, I don't have that yet for for zig so it just tells me that you have forgotten to implement zig method auto completion like this and also if you if you do void you have on you have forgotten to implement zig event auto completion because typically you have like events like this that get triggered so uh yeah this zig component can't really do anything yet from from its script but it does have a script and the script builds and and if you if you put in some bogus code here it, it will fail to build so uh yeah we're we're getting there we're getting there um i think i'm gonna try to get some kind of method calling working still today and uh this has already been quite a long thing for well for me to record not necessarily for you to watch because i'm trying to skip the boring parts but uh, let's see I'm gonna try to to get some kind of method calling working today and uh, we'll see how that goes so see you in a bit okay so I did eventually get this working uh, it raised some questions though that I'm gonna have to figure out uh, maybe we'll do a part two of this uh, at a later date but let's have a look at what I did basically uh, we already took a, a, a brief look at this register component method here so just like in C++ where we are registering methods we give the so-called declaration which just tells AngelScript what this method is supposed to look like in the script code and you bind it to some some function or method here in uh, C++. We can do the same now in uh, in uh, script and uh, in Zig. So we get the declaration. I have this test uh, print script code uh, function, member function or method, whatever you want to call it in in Zig, which looks like this. Um, so print script code is, uh, like I said, a member member function who takes self it also takes uh, just a, a standard integer as its uh, as its parameter and uh, what it does is it, it just prints things to do to the print f um, on the standard output basically so it prints the the, the integer that we that we um, gave it just to, to prove that parameters are being sent properly and then it actually prints its own script code <laughs> line by line to essentially prove that, uh, first of all, that the exposed properties are synchronized properly and um, that this that this self pointer here is, is properly handed to it. So what I thought was, since I'm binding this as just a, um, uh, a global function, essentially, on fr from um, from AngelScript, almost like like AngelScript doesn't know anything about Sig, but it knows about C. So I figured, okay, I'm gonna need to have some sort of wrapper function like this 
which takes the um, the self int pointer as just a 64-bit number essentially and then it takes the norm the normal parameters after that we need to use the call convention uh, for C and the first thing we need to do is we need to essentially unpack that pointer from integer and we get back the self pointer and then we can then we can actually call this this actual function like this is how I imagine I would have to do it um, and if we go and look here underscore print script code is the wrapper uh, this is what I'm binding here. This actually works. The interesting thing is that I seem to be able to just bind directly to this print uh, script code function as well, and it just <laughs> sort of handles that pointer somehow implicitly, um, which is interesting, and also doesn't seem to require the the C colon convention. So I need to I need to investigate this a little bit. I do think, however, that I I will need to have some sort of wrapper function because. I think that we will want to direct some of these calls, like if if you have, uh, let's just copy this name here, print script code. If we want to do something like uh, self dot print script code one two three, uh, this this call should obviously go to the zig code, but if I want to have uh, self dot um, on client, for example, you know this this returns a, a a boolean like this. I think this on client code is probably something that we will we'll want to handle on the C plus plus side, just so that we don't have to actually write this code in Zig because the, the functionality is already there in C plus plus and, and and this sort of almost like standard functionality that you can find in, for example, the triggers. So so all of this. Abort timer, broadcast message, message, clear avatar, create game object, all of these things, um, we have them already in C++. It's not really a, a, any point in, in actually rewriting that in Zig. So I think I will want to have all of this in C++ still. So this call should be directed to C++, while this code uh, or call should be directed to Zig. Because of that, I think I will want to have... Uh, I would want to have essentially this thing here to be to have some more information and, and when I put that version in I don't think it will implicitly be able to convert anything anymore so I think these these wrapper functions are probably a good thing to have maybe we can automate it somehow with with Zig's comp time code generation to actually create like a wrapper for this kind of function Anyway, that got a little rambly. Uh, it's just that I, I got kind of <laughs> surprised that it actually works even without the wrapper. Uh, the main thing, though, is that this does work. So, print script code that works. We still don't have the um, we still don't have the auto completion, right? Like, if you do self dot, you still have this. You have forgotten to implement zig method auto completion. Uh, yes. So, so that that will need to be. That will need to be figured out for Zig components, but um, yeah, this shouldn't build now because we don't have this on client here. See, like hmm? no matching symbol on client. That won't work. But if we remove that, we can keep the print uh, script code there, and now script build successfully. So pretty cool. When we create this object, which is Zig object, we call self print script code. And it will call this method, printing out the integer and then printing out its own script code. So essentially all of this. Let's see if it works. Yeah, so it minimizes that. And there we go. Some integer, one, two, three, and then, then the script code, which has one, two, three there. So this is sort of like code codeception on some some level. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, I think I will definitely be able to to use Angel Script for for Sig. Um, actually, yeah, you get it you get it two times, as you can see. If we scroll up because uh, you get it once on the on the server and once on the client. This object is is marked as existing both on the server and the client. So so that's why it appears twice. I do have some uh, long-term plans for how I want to handle scripting in in basis, and that's not using 
AngelScript that's using um, node graphs. If you watched my Tamber video, you, you know that I have this node graph execution engine, which I use currently only for Tamber, so for the audio, but uh, the idea is that it will be used for scripts as well. And you can just bind any function with uh, like a, a C calling convention to that. So you can have a script that has zig nodes and you can have C++ nodes all existing in the, in the same same node graph. So that's pretty cool. But I don't think that will necessarily happen for means. I want to actually start working on this on the game part of this game uh, reasonably soon. And this, I think, is how we will deal with that. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. This actually works, well, it works kind of better than I thought because it even worked without this wrapper function. But again, I think we're going to keep them there just in case. Anyway, with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to end this video here. This got, this got pretty long for me. Uh, and it's it's not, not that long for you. So I, I hope this, this was interesting. And uh, I'm going to improve this system for sure. Put in the standard methods that the, you expect a script to be able to, to handle, and then we can start to actually implement kind of puzzles and, and missions and objectives and, and actual game levels uh, using SIG. And so that should be great fun. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them below. If you have any insights, uh, you, something that you feel I should know, write that as well. And... Uh, I hope to see you next time.